Welcome to TMS Insights. It's the end of August, which brings to an end the bulk of the reporting season for full year 22, which uh, is a sigh of relief for us, Ben, because it's always busy and um, uh, we do get through a lot of companies and we're going to try to get you as many of those in today's session. So let's go from the top one, you know, in the in the the one in the tech space that we like and some techs have had a tough year, some have had a good year. Mm. Altium's in good shape. Yeah, there's been a bit of a parting of the seas really. Like you you definitely found that um, some businesses are really flourishing and Altium I think has got through a lot of those mm. COVID knock-on impacts that it had. Of course, um, PCB designers were forced to stop working because they didn't know if they could get the chips to design. So a lot of projects were put on hold, but that that was a ripping result, I thought. And um, um, Aram, the CEO, was um, very upbeat about still hitting these 2025 $500 million targets. So um, if they can do that, it should go well. You made a good comment to me because some companies advertise what they do all the time. Altium is one that really speaks at reporting period only. So yeah. you really had to catch them. When the, you and I did see them, Aaron, when he was out here about maybe five years ago. It was good yep. to eyeball him. But yeah. otherwise, it's him from San, San Diego. Diego or, um, and and you know, but he's been consistent. And, and, and he Massively. survived that COVID. And COVID made it hard for so many businesses. Yeah. But they've done well. And I guarantee you a trend that you often do see in downturns is businesses actually come out of it in stronger, more powerful yeah. shape for having gone through the downtrend. It actually is a it's a healthy thing in some ways. It flushes out some of the stuff that maybe you shouldn't have been doing, the cost-based stuff. Well, it wasn't going to go this way, but let's just jump into Tyra on that because that's yep. a really good example. It's had a horrendous time. We knew as soon as COVID hit, we saw how damaging it was. Um, so much of that have been through. The share price has been really low, let's face it. But yep. um, listening to the result today, there was things to like there, wasn't there? Absolutely. I, you know, I, I think... This company has had just about everything thrown at it that you could think of. Yeah. And um, again, uh, you know, I think they're now focusing a lot more on operating leverage was a term we heard about 40 times on the call <laughs> and throughout the presentation. And um, clearly they are looking at bringing forward their move to profitability. Um, I think the good news with them is that the last quarter, which they're sort of saying is the first true reflection of a quarter since they listed because we've had lockdowns, et cetera, ever since. And July, the trading update for July was strong. Mm. And and the result was a considerable beat on Mm. market expectations. Came out on a bad day for it. And and again, we're seeing that sell-off in high growth um, um, businesses because of the movement in bond markets, et cetera, and inflation. Yeah. But... The, the business to me is, you know, it's, it's delivering and yeah. um, it should benefit as that comes through. Ben's referring to the market being down 2% today, so you'd expect a lot of stocks doing that, but stocks like Tyro up is showing that they really did like it So yeah. and it was something to be proud of. Um, let's go to the iron ore stock. So two here, not the biggest of them, but two quite different ones. Deterra, the royalty business with the Mac 3 um, from BHP, looking good and then mineral resources which is of course lithium and we've got some crushing as well so yeah two very interesting businesses ben and yeah um, yep and uh, both doing well both doing very well yeah, yeah. i mean doTERRA is probably the simplest cleanest business i've almost ever sure yeah. discovered and yeah. um you know it's just riding the coattails of bhp doing this enormous expansion uh to their mac um, iron ore mine and you know that that mine when it hits full production is going to be two-thirds of BHP's production. So you've got the best operator in the business running this mine for you and you're just riding the um, the upside in the production that's going to come. It is linked to the iron ore price, but mm-hmm. it's a good business. And um, Minres, um, you know, the market didn't really like the result on first glance. but It had been trading pretty strongly. It's had a big yeah, run. Yeah, big run. Big so. run. And, but, like, you know, I saw um, another shareholder talking about on the weekend and, and she was saying if you look at what, a lot of these lithium stocks have been valued at and you apply that to Minres's coming lithium yeah, production, right. you're getting the iron ore and the mining services business for free. And this is what you can get in conglomerates, can't you? You yeah. get that parceling up and so Absolutely. and we've seen how they've sold assets in the past and they've unlocked a lot of value. Um, yeah, it's been a great business. So they've been very good. On the um, another tech we didn't mention there, we- Wise Tech. Um, yeah, that was a great result. Yeah, that was, that was the best result I mm. heard mm. this season, um, and that it was it was good because this massive revenue um, 
drive, but also very strong on their cost side. Yeah. They actually brought costs down during that period, yep. which you just you do not see. I know. Um, so, you know, clearly the cost out's done well. Yeah. And frame that up for everybody because yeah. costs are the issue. When we talk about yeah. the reporting season, we wrap it up in a moment. We're going to reflect on labour costs, input costs, mm. energy costs. Mm. And if you are driving your costs down, you've got a pretty special business. Absolutely. And, and so this is... Um, you know, most businesses, when they go through periods of stronger revenue generation, you will also find there's periods of stronger costs. And sometimes the analysts can look at it and say, you're actually buying growth. Yeah. And that might not be the best thing to be doing. No. It's been a criticism with Tyra, sure. you know, over yeah. the last year or two. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is when, when it goes the other way like this, you just see it all drop to the bottom line uh, yeah. and then some. So awesome from WiseTech and you know they've got 11 global freight forwarders that are only just moving onto the platform so now operational so a lot of revenue still to come yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned best reports the best report in the top 20 for me was probably West Farms yeah definitely like that looked uh, just terrific so let's maybe unpack that a little bit and maybe look at Woolies which was a another good result again from them yeah look at some um, West Farmers I thought Bunnings has clearly held up better, and it so often does mm. during these downturns. Yeah. All the analysts come out and say, "Discretionary spend's going to be down. Yeah, watch out." It Guess what? Happen. Everyone it goes to happen. Bunnings and yeah. does projects. Good times, bad times. Yeah, yeah and right. we know that you know tradies, builders are still incredibly busy at yeah. the moment. Um, Kmart was the highlight yeah. of West Farmers' result, yeah. and maybe that's a sign of people starting to try and find out cheaper options um, in yeah. this inflationary yep. environment, um, and. The other big thing is the lithium. You know, yeah, they've got the yeah. lithium mine coming on mine in, in a year or two now, Mount yeah, Holland, and yeah. um, um, that's going to that's going to be an interesting thing for them as well. It won't be as substantial as minerals. No, but it's but just how you can create value on the side. It's yeah. sort of what you've seen from you know, in the past in, in various little increments, and you're back there shareholder focus to do deals like that, yeah. which is to create value to shareholders. Um, Woolies, obviously, we watch this really for many reasons, but to see how people are changing spending patterns yeah. and how inflation's playing out. Yeah, definitely, because we've all seen, you know, I think everyone says inflation. I think the major issue for Woolworths and food prices has more been weather. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of this stuff has been driven by floods sure. and all, all yeah. those kind of things. But it's been a challenging period, I would yeah. say, for them. Um, look, it's a great business. It, it's a business that probably benefits somewhat if it, inflation continues to persist. Yeah. 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 yeah, people probably eat at home more. That's it. They always capture a bit of more margin when there's an inflation, some food inflation. You yeah. just don't want too much of it. No, so. no. And again, they're cycling numbers from COVID periods, yeah. which are yeah. unusual. Let's just grab that inflation piece, and that's what everybody's talking about. It's what's concerning central bankers. It's why interest rates are pressing up at the moment. It's causing a bit of edginess. But, Ben, we're going to talk about some stocks which actually benefit. Mm. And, and, in fact, equities, though we see things like, the PEs contract a bit overall and certain segments of the market, the unprofitables, the you know, the, the future earners, if you like, yeah, yeah. they, they, they get, get hit, hit a bit. But there are stocks in the market which definitely benefit and equities are a place that you need to. I mean, we know that if we sit in cash alone, inflation's running at well above. You're probably 4 to 5% behind. behind in a year yeah. because of the purchasing power decline. Yeah. So maybe let's just touch on the APAs, the yeah. transurbans, yeah. some of the REITs, you know, yeah. who are actually a position to benefit. Yeah, and I think, you know, there, there's always an area to look at. Mm. I mean, a lot of the analysts and fund managers have sort of said go to insurance companies. I'm not so sure about that, you know, because there is a lot of movement in terms of claims and weather mm. and all yeah. those sort of things. But these guys are a really clean play. I mean, transurban, they reckon for every... 1% increase in inflation, Transurban gets an additional 50 million in EBITDA. Mm. That's, and we're running at seven at yeah. the moment. There's no increase in cost in terms of managing a toll road in a higher inflationary environment. And all of those, but the, it flows straight through to your tolls. Yeah. And so the revenue drops to the bottom line. Same with APA, arguably better, I reckon, mm -hmm. because you're dealing with not the general public, and it's a bit politically sensitive. Yeah. You're dealing with um, Toll roads are politically Shell sensitive. and Woodside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's right. Um, and Cube was another one that had a good result, I thought. Yeah, And exactly. um, they, they sort of said we feels like we've had a bit of a win out of that. Yeah. Reits, some REITs have got rents linked to inflation. Yeah, rents go up like that. And this is both the, the thing you need to be on the right side of this inflation, and you can be, but some will be on the wrong side of it, and that's where the 
concerns will be. So yeah. understanding it's more, it's got multi dimensions, uh, the nature of inflation. And just something I'd add. Yeah. None of us know how this plays out over no. the next year or two. Um, And just something I'd add, no one knows how this plays out over the next year or two. So to me, it makes sense to have some businesses that will thrive if inflation persists and to have businesses that if we see it do, does start to drop, yeah. pressure comes off rates, then you get PE expansion again. Yeah. So yeah. it's not trying to bet the ship on one view or no, the other. No, that's right. And we've already seen some moderation elements that in, influence yeah. inflation. So anybody who pretends central bankers don't know, so... Uh, let's be realistic about our own capacity. So, yeah. <laughs> um, but let's sum up this season, Ben. We were interested in costs. We saw costs being an issue. Labor probably the number one issue Easily. to manage. And so, three point four percent unemployment is a problem if you're an employer. Massive. And it's a cost. It's the number one challenge I reckon every CEO spoke yeah. about was yeah. they cannot find staff. We all stand in front of our faces, but. There's not an obvious solution to this either. So it, it feels like this is going to be um, an issue for some time to come. Yeah. And it starts to get into this, you know, companies that have got good culture and are people want to work there, yeah. they, they're the winners in Premium. this environment. Yeah, that's um, right. And um, hopefully, you know, there's a number on that list. Where and then the other ones that are leveraged in the sense they don't need the labour numbers yes. to drive yeah. it. So capital light businesses yeah. are also labour light, which yeah. can be an interesting focus as we yeah. go forward to the next period. Um, but overall, I think, Ben, look, I think we were impressed with the season. Yeah. It beat my expectations Definitely. overall. And I think when we break it down, um, we didn't get enormous guidance. We've got more than what I thought, to be honest. Mm. And uh, businesses are in good shape. The thing that I'm most impressed with, um, at this point in other times of the cycle, the balance sheets of these companies wouldn't be so good. Mm. They're in good health. Really good. I think corporate Australian listed balance sheets are probably almost the strongest we've ever seen. Yeah. And a lot of our businesses will hopefully be able to take advantage of this period. West Farmers has got no debt That's virtually, it. you know, and um, it gives you a lot of optionality during this time. And I think if you see interest rates worry the market from time to time in the next few months, it's the support behind the market that it's just not going to drop altogether mm. because that debt level is well and truly under control. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's not, this isn't another GFC period where companies were entering with bloated balance sheets, short term debt rolling off. You remember all that stuff? Yeah, that was I do. Going very on. It's well. It's completely different. It's a different now. time of the cycle. So yeah. interest rates going up isn't normally altogether great, but it's not that bad no. when you're so well positioned. That's yeah. the thing. So. And just Ben, lastly, you won on the team, um, wedding bells pending. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Aaron and Madeline. Yeah, it's um, good to see Madeline's making an honest man of it. <laughs> <laughs> we've sat next to Aaron for over 20 years, I think, now. Exactly. So, um, so um, yeah, we're very happy for him. Yeah, no, uh, congratulations to them both. And um, next time we bring you an update, uh, they'll be absolutely married. <laughs> <laughs> we hope. We look forward to the <laughs> insights in September.